sprucers. What? Sprucers. What? Hey, where, man. Hi, where my food? I love you, where my food? It's coming. Like right now? I don't see it. Get off me. <laughs> Do something else, brother. Mom, I know what's in your hand. Come on! Hey. <laughs> brother. Come on, Mama. All right, who do you want to... Are you throwing a temper tantrum? <laughs> Won't you take the blues crew? I'll okay. take Spruce. Come on, Spruce. Hey. Hey. Come on. It's like breakfast, did not it? You need some breakfast? You need some breakfast for me? I just want attention first. There's a ninja moves happening behind you. Hey guys, welcome back to KNS Get Out. So we have already fed the animals, broke our microphone in the meantime, trying to <laughs> rile everybody up and well, keep- Luigi did, you did. Luigi broke our microphones, our receiver. So we're gonna be without microphones for a little while, unfortunately. Today we have something fun. Um, I have been really concerned about making sure that Blue is nursing the triplets enough and that they're getting enough milk. So they are officially one week old today and believe it or not, we didn't own a scale. So I ordered a scale, it finally came in and we're going to weigh the babies and make sure that they are growing regularly. Everybody's super rambunctious and very pushy and goaty today. Hey, can I clean your uh, poop factory please? Beep beep, beep beep. 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 <laughs> They're like, uh, no? Yeah, Koopa wants to help. He's my helper. Hey man, you broke my receiver. Whoa. <laughs> yeah, you broke it. Now we have to go without microphones for a little while. Okay, no, you didn't. No. Anything new that comes into this pen, they have to check out 100%. Herc bomb. Herc bomb. Speaking of Herc and his bombs, I took him on a little walk yesterday to burn some energy. And let me tell you, he's stealthy. I was watching him because I'm just walking down the trail, no big deal, stepping on all the leaves, making them crunch. And he would just randomly like cut me off on the path. And I realized he is trying to take the path of the least sound. He is super stealthy on his feet. You can even hear him going through the woods on the trail. It was pretty incredible. Blue is usually avoiding the broom at all costs. <laughs> He's 
the little guys are kind of like, hey, what is that? What are you doing? Mama's calling you. You're not scared, are you? Oh, they're getting their ninja moves, and it is so cute. This little guy, the earless wonder, he is the bravest of all three for sure, and the most curious. The little boy with the ears is pretty brave too. He's really getting his ninja moves in. Every day, you kind of got to get Blue and warm back up to you. <clears throat> she just gets so protective when she's in here with them full time, all throughout the night. She's paranoid. She's watching. And so even when we come in in the mornings, you can't just get right after the goatlets. You can't just get right after her. She's got to get warm back up. It seems like every day you got to re-earn her trust. And it takes a little bit. And I get it. <laughs> she's a protective mama. I'm telling you, this is the ringleader right here. <laughs> he knows he's special because of his ears. We had over 1,000 comments on our last video. I asked you to, and I appreciate it. Can I be honest with you? We still don't have names picked. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't even gone through all the comments yet because there were so many to go through. Yeah, we're going to dedicate time this evening to go through them. Uh, we have friends that are texting us like, hey, this is a good name. So, you know, a lot of great ideas out there. But sometimes it's something that's meaningful to Shannon and I. Sometimes it's just something that clicks and you're like, oh, yeah, those would be great names for the trio. But it still hasn't come to us yet. It's nope. just, it's, just, it's right there. We got to get to know them a little bit better, don't we, Bluesy? She's nursing mm -hmm. the earless wonder. They love that corner. Yeah, you talk about activity level. Like day one, obviously they were just born. Zero activity. They just want to go to sleep. They get a little nursing in. Day two, still like no activity. They just eat and sleep. Day three, you get like one play session out of them and they spend about five, 10 minutes just kind of trying to walk and all that. But we are a week old today. And let me tell you, the activity level, way up. They spend a whole lot more time outside, practicing their moves, trying to figure things out, climbing pallets. They're this pretty stinking when, cute. This is when it just gets awesome. So we really try to let them check us out before we check them out. Again, reestablishing our relationship with Blue every single day. But if you let them come to you, let them be the curious ones like they naturally are. It helps them a ton to not be afraid of us. So that then we can reach out to them and touch them and they become our little petting zoo friends, family. This is the corner right here. This is the chill spot. One of you actually sent us these. We've got, what, I think three of them? Three of them. And we weren't 100% sure at first. We're like, well, what's our need? We've got the two feeders, we've got the big feeder, and then we just put hay on the hercut and stuff for some of the others. But when she was about to go in labor and we had to separate everybody out and get spruce and Ouija down in Goatville and all that, these actually came in handy. Very oh, very much handy. So. And so we filled them up, put them down there, gave them hay to eat. But even for blue, especially with the last couple days being rainy, we were able to fill this up. We can put it inside the shelter and she'll sit there and eat on it instead of coming out here in case it's wet or she just doesn't want to leave her babies. So thank you very much. These are handy. Blue's curious how much she weighs. I think she had a new year's resolution to drop two pounds. <laughs> I think you dropped more than two. <laughs> she says I dropped three babies. Blue's getting a drink. She's telling her babies to get back in the shelter. They come out and she's like, uh, uh, no, 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 go back in there. <laughs> hey, so uh, one of us is gonna have to be like the control weight. So we're gonna have to be on the scale and see how much we weigh so that when we pick up the babies, we can just subtract. How much do you think I weigh? I haven't weighed in forever. 
Oh, I bet you weigh... I feel like you're low right now. I bet you're around like 205. All right, fully dressed. We're at 209.7. Okay, 209.7. Couldn't I just... Let me go Can drink, you just be 210? Let me go drink three tenths of water. <laughs> three tenths of pound of water real quick. Problem is, Blue's going to barricade her babies in. Yep. Can I borrow one of your babies, honey? Look at this little guy. He's right here. Oh, there's one. Come here, buddy. You're okay. It's okay. That's a good girl, Blue. Do you ever get nervous she's just gonna headbutt you? All the time. Because I really do put my face right in her face. Where she'll come right up to my face and I'm always worried about that. That's a good girl. You're so pretty, Blue. I'm just gonna step up on the scale, okay, honey? Two seventeen point two. Two seventeen point two. Aww. Yeah, I'll take all the time I need. <laughs> I'm gonna make a note in my phone real quick, okay? Okay. Okay, so the earless wonder is seven and a half pounds at a week old. Good job, Good job Bluesy. Bluesy. Putting weight on him. Let's see if I can get past her snag one of the other ones yeah she's she's being pretty protective yeah um, look at her <laughs> may i enter please stone cold she's a great mama but she always acts like she's about to snap The little girl is asleep in the frame wall and her brother's over there. Hey, hey, we're still playing. <laughs> what are oh, you doing? He made a cuddle spot and laid down with her. Aww. And That's those are the adorable. Two I haven't weighed yet. Oh, of course. The little earless wonder is now making his spot. He's doing that. Oh, and then he laid down. Hey, Bluesy, can we weigh your babies? Mm hmm? Can we weigh your babies? Yeah, protect your head. Does it make you feel better if you can see? Gonna step right over there, okay? It's okay. 214.7. Okay, so that one ended up weighing five and a half pounds, and Blue said, You are not getting my little girl. <laughs> That's exactly what she said. Blue Z, come on. I mean, I can't even hardly combat that. <laughs> She is so funny. The earless one is, I want to be back there, mom. Oh my goodness. Incoming. Coming for, excuse me. Wait, mom. Mom, could you move your bottom? Mom, I want to be back there. Mom. Mom. <laughs> <laughs> I love that little guy. Do you want some help? What if I traded you for your sister? What if I picked up your sister and I put you back there? I'm not really sure how I'm gonna get past Blue, but- Yeah, I was gonna say, good luck. We may only be weighing two of the goatlets today. We may have to get her later. So he was how much? Seven and a half? He was seven and a half, and the other little boy was five and a half. Okay, which I could feel that size-wise. I mean, his frame, you can feel, is a little bit bigger than the other one. He's taller. 
But for not having ears, it's kind of funny that he weighs more. <laughs> I'm just a big guy, everybody. I'm big. Big, 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 big. Mom. Mom. Mom! Get out of the way! <laughs> I just want my brother's sister over here. You just come for wiggle, wiggle. Wiggle, wiggle. He's got to be on top of them. He has to be on top of the little girl right now. Just comfortable. You guys make great pillows. <laughs> what are you doing, Goof Troop? That's a little boy. Directly underneath him is his sister. I mean, literally. We can't even see her. Um, brother, um, you're squeezing me. I can hear little grunts out of them. Can we weigh your, your baby girl, please? We just want to make sure they're all growing enough, you know? Because we don't really get to see all the times that you milk. I love you. You trust me? You can trust me. I know it. I feel like that's a no face. <laughs> Not happening? I don't think so. We can go see everybody else. I mean, I could so. force it, but I really just don't see the need right now, you know? Yeah. Neither does Blue. <laughs> no, she doesn't. She lets me pet her, but she is not loving this situation. You're doing great. Yeah, you're doing a wonderful job. And you're tired. Oh my goodness. Am I that boring? <laughs> so I do have a slight concern. I know that because we grain feed and we provide all the hay that we do, you know, these guys are gonna get enough to eat. But whenever it comes springtime, summertime, we want them to graze a little bit more, maybe eat a little bit less grain do I have enough land here in Goatville for 11 goats? As they're goatlets and they're little tykes, like this handsome fella here, that's Larry. That's one of Blue's firstborn out here. While they're this size, it's not that big of a deal. But when these are 11 adult goats, you wanna talk about needing some space to forage. We're gonna to have to allocate some more land for you, aren't we, buddy? If you've been with us for a while, you know that we get them all out to graze. And we're gonna wait a little bit, of course, till the babies are, you know, big enough to do so. But we may have to add on to Goatville. And that leaves me with a couple options. We can either kind of adjust the electric fence and enclose more of the property. We wanted to leave the front part up there to kind of give us a barrier, a little bit of privacy. They don't clean it out so much that it would make it perfectly transparent. And basically I'm talking about like, that hillside there. Our fence stops. Are you trying to eat my camera? That electric fence stops before that hill goes back up. And there's probably another half acre at least, maybe a little bit more than that right there. And this, this Goatville pen that we have currently, which is enclosed by that electric fence, this encompasses about one acre. And the recommended goat or sheep per acre is about six to eight goats per acre. I believe a lot of that is if you're going to put them out to pasture and let them eat and graze and browse and do what they do. But because we supplement grain and we provide hay, it technically would be okay. And if we get them out, let them run around, let them eat out here on the 20 acres, then we've got more than enough land. So it's not like a pressing problem, just things to think about. I'd take about five acres to myself, Dad. I bet you would. What's on your face there, big guy? Oh, my nose. Yeah, that's true. My horns? Oh no. You're a handsome fella. Very personable too, huh? Love you, Betty. Yeah. It's rough being me. I tell you what, I, I just, it's just really hard. I mean, if you think about it, I got a rough life, you know? Nobody loves me. My goats don't want to play with me. I don't get enough food. Uh, buddy, you're full of baloney. 
I take some bologna. Look at this pink, mister. What's all this pink up here? Big scary guy, goodness gracious. Look at these teethers. Look at these teethers. <laughs> He's trying to hey, steal whatever that is. That's my flashlight, buddy. Can I, uh, can I keep that, please? Oh, you're just the sweetest. I'm just scariest. Oh, that's right. You're the scariest. Yeah, I'm real scary. Stay away from here, rabbits. Squirrels. I'm scary. <laughs> Golly. You just live such a rough life. <laughs> it's really hard because when people come over, like your mom was over here yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> and what they see in videos, um, this right here, versus what they get in person are two different hurts. Yep. And we're struggling to train him out of that because we want him to be that way. I don't want strangers on my land and I want my hurt to tell me and I want him to scare them. <clears throat> but it's really hard to, man, dude, you, you, do, you, ro <laughs> you just, you just rolled in all of that and now you're bringing it to me. Like I need extra goat poop or something. Oh, thank you. But it's kind of hard to train, you know, like, hey, this person's safe, this person's not. You know, you can go over the top with it and we could use the e-collar and whatever, but I don't want to do that. It's, he's doing it by nature. He's doing his job. Yes, I wish anybody could come over and love the guy that we allow, but it just doesn't work like that. It's kind of, kind of a unique situation. Ain't nobody else on the planet ever going to be able to do this until we grow out of that or figure it out or I don't know what. But for now, we're just going to let him do his job. That paw smelled like poo, Herc. Well, I put it in poo, Mom. Oh, I'm mistreated. Mistreated. Do you think anybody's really going to believe you? Mistreated. Where's my treat, Mom? Didn't you bring me one? He already got it. <laughs> Mom, where's my other treat you brought me? <laughs> yeah, it's weird sometimes. You're hugging this guy and he's got his face right in your face or his head right by your neck and you're just like I know what he's capable of but he's just he just loves us he's yep. loyal to a fault I think I got some of that paw poo I think you did too awesome I mean that's a normal day at Shady Acres you yeah. smell like poo all day always going for the strings aren't you Hi, Sprucers. Are you getting jealous? Do you need some attention too? Do you need some attention too? You guys are just the silliest. Hi, Koopa. Mm -hmm. It's an attention party. Hi, little Mario. Oh, thank you for burping in my face. Thank you. Except somebody telling me right where I need to be. I am so thankful that the goatlets are here. They're born, they're healthy. They don't have attitude yet. You got it? Yes, man. Don't talk with your mouth full, young lady. That's rude. I'm not a lady. Mom, mom, mom. Dad being rude. I would usually use rude. What are you, I never rude to nobody, ever. But obviously, you guys know we've got a lot to do out here. And it all kind of got put on hold 
until these goatlets were born. We got everything situated. It's just all of our focus and attention went on that. And I have to be honest, whenever you come out of that and the goatlets are growing up, they're on normal pace, everything's good. All of a sudden you're kind of like, oh yeah, we got to get back to some other stuff. <laughs> so we've been talking about and planning next steps, what we need to do. You know, we could have another very cold snap ahead of us. It's still, you know, early February. I mean, we've had snow in May before in this area. You just never know. But the camper is pretty winterized. Everything's good there. The office, Shannon's gonna agree with this wholeheartedly, but I need to get back on working on the office. I had to pull some of my electrical cables down so that I could get those corner ties up. And so I've got to reroute that back up there. But before I do that, I need to go ahead and cut those little gussets out where that power line is going to be. That way they're not in the way when I'm cutting and I don't accidentally cut into it. So I think we're going to work on moving stuff around in there because it's going to get sawdusty and we got to have a good plan with the shop vac to get that sawdust up as we're doing it. But I'm ready to get back on that train. I, uh, I've been doing stuff outside because it's just so stinking beautiful out here. Cut down a couple of dead trees. The Widowmakers are down up there and I'm trying to cut those into rounds. We're going to split it up. All that stuff, it's time to get back on it. You've been doing great. Thanks. Yeah, no, I'm super thankful. That tree that you cut down that was a Widowmaker, you really did some work cleaning all that up. So thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, I want access back to that side of the trail again. I do too. You know? <laughs> if I can get that stuff split right now, it'll help it be ready and seasoned by next year. Yeah. It may be already because it was a dead standing tree, but we just want to make sure. I don't know. When you started cutting into it, it still looked pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty good stuff. But if I'm being honest, when it's this nice out this time of year, it is hard to want to work indoors. Those are the things you say for like rainy days or when there is a cold day randomly. I just want to be out here. I mean, it is just so nice. Still covering them up. Oh. The earless wonder is resting his head on his brother and his sister. Hi, buddies. I'm not gonna mess with you, okay? I'm just gonna let you guys rest. I will say one of the comments that we still get, and it's hard to know what videos y'all have seen, which ones you haven't. If you're brand new here, welcome. Then you may not know that Blue is a La Mancha goat, but La Manchas, it's very, very common for them to have those small ears. And it's not that they don't have ears, it's not that they can't hear, it's just they don't have the big floppy ears like all the rest of them. And they've got, I think there's two kinds. Gopher and elf. Gopher and elf. But you see, Hair Bear here, he's got little bitty ears that stick out. So it kind of looks like you got little ears and I can actually feel them. A little bit of cartilage in there. Mr. Lair Bear, he just looks like he was gypped. There's nothing there. You can feel tiny little bits of cartilage, but that is the La Mancha breed. Now, Blue, La Mancha, she's the one we got from Chad, Chad Mel's brother, Doss Farms. We had Mario here, which is Luigi's brother, Big Mario. Not Lil Mario, but Lil Mario is Big Mario's son as are the three new goatlets. So they are part La Mancha and part Mario. <laughs> I think Mario, if I remember right, I think there was like a blend of three. It was like Nubian, some kind of dairy goat, which La Manchas are a dairy goat. Pygmy. And Pygmy, which I believe is partially what Mama is. We got all the different breeds here, but that's why we are excited for these three goatlets because we're gonna see the blend of the traits and who got what and where and I'm very excited to see these guys get bigger and their traits become more prominent. Well, think we took care? Calm, relaxing stage for everybody. <laughs> I was going to say, you think we gave them enough attention? Yeah, I think so. I need more. More attention, ma'am. Oh, that's what I'm talking about. Oh, yeah, right there. Is that the good stuff, dude? You know, people mention how wide he is, how big he is, but the joke has always been he's literally been growing his midsection because he knew he was going to stretch out eventually. His little head, I, you know, I think if I remember right, he's he's a lot of boar 
A lot yeah. of Borgo. And, and his head is so much smaller than his body. Yep. Yeah. But look how big, I mean, head? look, compared to Hercules even, look how big he is. I know how big I am, and I tell Herc every stinking day, hey Herc, I'm bigger than you. I kick your butt. Well, that's rude. Well, I would. That's spruce though, he's rude. Well, that's true. So yeah, a lot of background on these goats and goatlets, and a lot of them are related now. I'm excited to see how all the relationships come together and what they're like when they're all big goats. Because adult goats act a lot different than goatlets. Wouldn't you say? I'm gonna act like I wanna act, you know. You're my little finger biter. I'm still healing up from that big guy. I'm sorry, you put your finger in there. All right, well, we're gonna give Blue just a little bit of time, cuddling with those babies, let her anxiety kind of go back down, and then we will get the dolet weighed. Yes. All right, well, I'm gonna go fire up the tractor and get some stuff done outside. Okay. I mean, I'm gonna go inside the office and stay out of the sunshine and work on the rafters. That's not happening. It's too nice out. Well, guys, we love and appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much for coming on this journey with us. And as always, we'll see you in the next one. Bye. Bye.